time has come. For 300 years, we prepared. We grew stronger. While you rested in your cradle of power. Believing your people were safe and protected, you were trusted to lead the Republic. But you were deceived, as our powers of the dark side have blinded you. Seen the skies. Chapter 3 Senator Eli Norder. Accompanied by our atramentous cloaks, whilst peculiarly slithering across multiple masses of disfigured crowds, no sheer individual grasped upon our animistic ambitions. Whilst erecting pillars decisively segregated the exterior masses of Coruscant, Tania. Darth Kematum and I passively embarked upon the archaic Senate quarter. As I consciously deployed an utter step onward a configured platform, independently bordered from the Jedi Council itself, in undated conversations echoed amidst my perplexing mind. As our utter facial structures remained merely shrouded by onyx cloaks, I could vehemently endure a fluctuation between the arduous tensions of Coruscant's vigilant society and the deceitful prowess of the Sith. Within this ambiguous endeavor, I consciously obscured the electromagnetic pulse grenades within my concealed garment, as well as my metallurgic staff. As I gradually allowed myself to consciously scrutinize the erecting masses of the Senate itself, a peculiar formation of upper-class individuals apathetically engaged in conversation. Accompanied by the attires of their sheer opulence, this particular crowd wielded no such influence on those who vehemently endured a dubious existence of conditional poverty. Their conscious indifference would sincerely deteriorate those who precariously suffered beneath the significant prowess of the Jedi Republic. In my sole opinion, this insidious sight disfigured me. In this particular moment, within the erecting masses of Coruscant's rigorous political facilities, the upper-class individuals, who were solemnly awaiting the benevolent speech of Senator Eli Norda himself, utterly sustained their inconspicuous mannerisms. Based on the societal norms of the core worlds, geographically located parallel from the Outer Rim territories amidst the unbeknownst galaxy, it was indubitably considered treasonous by the vigilant Jedi themselves to endorse the reprehensible faculties of the Sith, a bewildered monstrosity who ambiguously earned his deceitful entitlement to rot beneath the heterogeneous Republic, alienated. Based on their rather ignorant perceptions, we were but wicked acolytes to their conditioned government, a false prophecy, drowned amidst a concealed universe. Our extolling vengeance would soon and precariously ignite a fluctuating empire, presumptuously forged by the mystical prowess of this inevitable act. The convicted assassination of Senator Eli Norda, himself. Some classify him as a benevolent hero. I proclaim this as false. He was but a tyrannical swine who inductively sought out recognition from the Republican government. His conscious greed vigorously inflicted minorities, such as the Huts, the Black Sun, or the Disciples of Ragnos. These peculiar factions are as of now indubitably classified as evicted criminals due to their solemn act of surviving an intrinsic system which dubiously no longer values societal progression. Unfortunately, each particular faction vehemently sought out multiple resources, however. Each comprehensible stock was scarce, however. This peculiar circumstance had caused us as independent systems to conquer each other, 
but we ambiguously misplaced our conscious ethnicities, which ultimately endorsed the utter remembrance of our two adversaries. The Jedi. After all, it was Norda's arduous influence which gradually finalized or canceled the trading routes between the Outer Rim territories, in order to sincerely avoid any other peculiar factions gaining a sheer sense of utter dominance over the detrimental Republic. A formal treaty, endorsed by constitutional law, was the induced result of our insidious suffering. This has caused the Sith to vehemently starve, while merely mangling the utmost ability to sustain our financial prowess at a rather fluctuating rate. We craved unconditional opulence, but scarce resources have indecisively stimulated us to consciously embark upon the unbeknownst territories, whilst seeking utmost refuge. Until now, we have returned. The induced Sith would indubitably gain their inflicting prowess based on our strenuous efforts. Darth Malgus, the one who vehemently sought out to dubiously incorporate his martial endeavors onto our former empire, gradually endorsed the conflict with the conquering factions. However, whilst also ambiguously sustaining our corporate prowess with the conscious galaxy itself. This is it. Tinia, the passive lady, proclaimed, as we inductively stumbled across multiple alloyed platforms. These peculiar surfaces were indubitably enclosed by crimson rugs, which potentially signified the great opulence of the sheer politicians. Fools, I consciously uttered, as these decisive conversations gradually fluctuated. Do you hear them? Each bastard mimicking the Jedi's influence upon their political endeavors. Without these guardians, they're nothing. Without their leader, they shall bleed across Coruscant, exemplifying headless sheep mangling a true cause. Enough of this, Darth! The conscientious Kemajim slightly muttered, as he ultimately feasted his amber eyes upon an erecting balcony, which sincerely harbored the formulated entrance of a rather abundant coliseum. Vigorous Jedi dubiously patrolled these architectural manifestations. Their augmented perceptions met with ours. Potentially, the fierce Twi'lek tremendously gave sincere birth to our rather compulsory vigilance. Perhaps our coercive existence had gradually befuddled the articulated stream of their consciousness. A disturbance in the Force. Each hostile entity potentially acknowledging our depraved schemes. How naive I was. The vigorous Jedi could merely comprehend those who utterly sought out foul endeavors. As I ultimately grasped upon these peculiar tensions, I, without revealing any sheer fragments of hesitation, stumbled onward. Quick! I passively iterated, as my amber sight gradually confronted the fellow Sith before my deliberate stance. We must walk different paths. We cannot afford any more provocation. Doth! The fierce Twi'lek essentially proclaimed in a sheer attempt of embarking upon an arduous argument, perhaps. But my rather exuberant mannerisms had potentially perplexed his ambitious focus. Rogue! The passive lady had petulantly whined, as if the malevolent terrors of her conscious mind ultimately bled across her logical perceptions. She was afraid. I, too, inductively shared her rigorous sentiments, but alas, we dearly embarked upon this facility for an immense ambition, a cause, one which could not solemnly drown us from this benevolent act. Accompanied by utmost passion, I consciously grasped upon Tania's shrouding body and sincerely enclosed my atramentous limbs anterior to her nourished and muscular pelvis. A slight hug, which potentially embraced the utter fragments of our sinful limerence. All will be well, my love, I passively muttered into her erecting ear, beneath her coinciding horns, as if a mere fraction of illumination dubiously retracted the onyx darkness within my astral soul. Darth! The fierce Twi Lake once more utterly articulated in a tremendous attempt of sheerly conditioning my conscious focus within this rather peculiar moment. It was as if he consciously grasped upon my limerent attempt. Come atum! I vigorously preserved. Norda's speech shall start in any moment. We must sustain communication through our telecom system, if we do so desire to be innocent within the eyes of the Jedi. 
as I gradually unleashed my rather unostentatious expression. Female monotonous speech ultimately embarked upon the erecting halls of the gathering coliseum. Its presumptuous tone inductively echoed across the exterior masses of Coruscant, indubitably enclosed by generating streetlights, befuddling vehicle traffic, as well as the erecting constructions. As multiple audience members arduously feasted their conscious perceptions upon this perplexing manifestation, each ethnic individual obliged to its command. They utterly ascended onward alloyed stairs, in attempt of embarking upon a mechanical doorway. All politicians and associates, please take a seat. The presentation will start in circa five minutes. Five minutes. That's all we have. I sincerely iterated, as if my inflicting sentiments ultimately drawn to my scrupulous focus. Yes, the passive lady gradually obliged. Essential. Split up my associates. We shall strike the senator as soon as I give the command. Remain vigilant. What are you planning? Give it. Utmost public humiliation, I consciously muttered, as my rather belligerent mannerisms ultimately influenced the fierce Tweetleg, as well as Tinia herself. Accompanied by sheer pleasure, they ultimately extolled this particular aspiration without questioning the malevolent consequences of this detrimental act. We could sincerely agree that it would remain to be a sumptuous sacrifice to our conscious organization, the Sith. May the dark side guide you, Darth Kematum benevolently proclaimed. Without strenuously revealing any peculiar formations of sheer hesitation, we physically separated ourselves amidst the inflicting crowds of Coruscant. Goodbye. A dubious voice passively embarked upon my perplexing mind. However, due to my rather rational angst, I subconsciously dismissed the peculiar tones, acknowledging that this sheer endeavor remained to be a public event. Security protocols ambiguously were not present. Oddly, the utter ignorance of the induced Jedi would indubitably sustain a precarious factor on their behalf. Acknowledging this, tremendous perceptions of our rigorous adversaries gradually forsook within the immense masses of diverse politicians. Kamatu and Tinia lost within the crowd. Multiple conversations ultimately fluctuated as an incoming corridor sheerly segregated the exterior manifestations of Coruscant and the ominous Colosseum. Within this particular moment, I could gradually sustain the intimate sensation of opulent individuals slithering against my adjumentous robe in an ambiguous attempt of compulsively embarking upon their conditioned destination, which gradually remained to be an alloyed bench, sincerely serving as the exhibiting audience chamber within this immense construction. As we, as a rather diverse society, stumbled further onto this fathomless arena, I could arduously perceive multiple politicians consciously attempting to acknowledge my rather depraved existence. Accompanied by utmost curiosity, perhaps, each dubious individual gradually catapulted their inauspicious sight upon me, as if they wielded a provoked intuition toward me. Their eyes following mine. However, some merely perceived me as a sheer associate of the Republican ideal, and thus utterly dismissing my rather sinful existence. Yet here I was, an alienated Sith Lord, whose sole ambition was to sincerely extinguish the societal government of this rather essential capital. And the sheer voices of the altered politicians presumptuously disgusted me. I immensely desired utmost punishment for those who strenuously opposed it, the minority groups of the Outer Rim territories. Within my rather perplexing mind, I arduously wielded a vivid appetite for a governmental catastrophe. As I gradually reiterated this particular sentiment within my vigilant thoughts, I could passively sense the force exuberantly pulsating within my physical body, as if a bewildering carnivore tremendously hungered for the utmost cease of Senator Eli Norda's existence. Within this particular endeavor, I consciously discovered no sheer shame, as Coruscant utterly remained to be a military aspiration for the Dark Council. The Sith, based on our animalistic perceptions, sincerely desired martial conquest. Our time has come. Darth! A rather monotonous tone passively iterated amidst my telecom device. Within this particular moment, my perplexing mind utterly combusted with an unconditional combination of sheer angst and a pulsating infatuation for spontaneous chaos. Truly a rather depraved sentiment, perhaps. The fierce Tweedleg presumptuously attempted to utterly communicate. 
Tony and I managed to travel together. No provocation has affected us yet. However, the security guards had already suspected us to be ambiguous. Where are you? As I cautiously elevated my telecom device on one of my facial structures, my amber eyes thoroughly slithered across the oval architectures of this immense stadium. As my sheer sight ultimately met with another erecting balcony, slightly beneath the ceiling of the Allied construction, martial guards patrolled the regional area. Not only did they vastly serve as a security protocol, but also tremendously pledged allegiance to the Republican government and the Jedi. Kamatum, I passively iterated. I wield no knowledge of our whereabouts. Be cautious. Guards everywhere. They too laid their eyes upon me, and I'm quite confident that the Jedi shall arrive here soon as well. The security measures in this place are beyond our control at the moment. My advice to you is to blend in with the masses. We cannot afford to reveal ourselves quite yet. As I sincerely attempted to further the other scrutiny of this peculiar coliseum, another technical transmission tremendously embarked upon my telecom device. Incoming contact, stand by, I presumptuously proclaimed as I consciously manipulated the mechanical fragments of my technological apparatus in a sheer attempt of receiving the contact. I consciously remained a recipient to this dubious transmission, perhaps, accompanied by utmost apprehension due to gradually avoiding any peculiar provocations of the vigilant Jedi. I passively catapulted myself parallel to an erecting pillar in a sheer attempt of drowning myself in the atramentous shadows, indubitably forsaken and essentially hidden from the societal perceptions. Yes? Garth broke. A rather monotonous voice gradually echoed. However, the radio waves of this particular transmission gradually manifested itself in a rather deficient static. TC-14. A report? Indeed. We have met contact with the Jedi Temple. Immediate activation of EMPs are essential at this moment. The mechanical droid tremendously evoked. Affirmative. Activation is in progress. Farewell. I consciously proclaimed as I, accompanied by... A slight grasp operated the technical trigger of the electromagnetic pulse grenades within this immense facility. As I innocuously acted on this act of phase, the entirety of each communication relay greatly deteriorated in its former existence. Each personal circuit gradually malfunctioned within this vivid border of Coruscant, thus deficiently depleting the sheer ability to sustain utmost communication to anyone within the radius of approximately 800 kilometers. Darth! A rather feminine voice exuberantly combusted within the remaining electromagnetic waves of my segregating apparatus. It was as if my mystical prowess gradually drowned the facilitated voices of each conscious individual within the metaphysical borders of Coruscant. Yet I immensely discovered utmost apprehension from the spare transmission, as if a former love had sincerely penetrated my utmost focus, a pure sensation of relevant passion. Tania. I passively iterated, amidst the perplexing masses of my vigilant mind. Potentially, she has endured a martial endeavor against the multiple patrols of the Allied Coliseum. The Sith were in danger. As the conscious masses merely persisted with their rather monotonous departure, onto the inevitable speech of the deviated Eli Norda himself, I exuberantly slithered across the metallurgic architectures. In an immense attempt of gradually revealing the potential threat to my utter perception, I scrupulously sought out the passive Lady Tania and Darth Kematum. I thus strenuously leaped onward multiple obstructed pillars in sheer support of alloyed beams within the architectural stadium beneath its amalgamated roof. I arduously crawled amidst the enclosing walls. The hospitable politicians mangled the sheer ability of utterly acknowledging my rather deviant act as I scrupulously leaped across the erecting balconies. Even the martial guards tremendously failed to perceive my strenuous movements. Fools. Accompanied by the dark side of the force, my physical body consciously oscillated onto a metallurgic surface, slightly above the immense audience. Without utterly revealing any peculiar fragments of innocuous anticipation, Multiple echoes of applause manifested themselves from the opulent crowd below. Welcome, welcome, Coruscant. A fine night under the banners of our proud Republic. Greetings to all of you who made this possible. We've brought peace to our government. Congratulations.
congratulations to all of us. Welcome, welcome. An exuberant yet charismatic voice indubitably combusted alongside a technological apparatus, which ultimately served as a transmitting microphone. His peculiar mannerisms immensely f influenced the utter masses of the alloyed stadium, without consciously perceiving him physically. An ambiguous animosity fluctuated within my depraved spirit. Senator Eli Norda has arrived. The pulsating force gradually resonated within my perplexing mind, thus exuberantly giving birth to a sincere ambition. A public gibbet. An assassination. It would seem fitting amidst the public humiliation. My amber eyes tremendously pulsated, accompanied by the depraved animosities of the vigilant Jedi. But alas, my accompanying associates had utterly vanished from this particular mission. Perhaps our hostile adversaries had ambiguously seized them, potentially. Tania, I passively iterated. Kematum, where are you? Within the perplexing masses of my rather rigorous perception, I consciously scrutinized the allied balcony, whilst cheerily shrouding myself behind an erecting pillar once more. As I gradually managed to indubitably stumble onward a metallurgic door, which ultimately remained obstructed, by the gravitational patterns of an architectural wall, concealed itself rather suspiciously. It was as if martial individuals merely attempted to potentially imprison something, or someone, perhaps. HALT! A rather masculine voice embarked upon my conditional mind, as a vigilant patrol consciously approached my apparent whereabouts. As an utter sentiment of complex fear tremendously pulsated through my very physical body, I immensely summoned the force onto my scrupulous grasp, and thus prepared myself for malevolent endeavors. Sir, we got the rest. The one we have been looking for stands before us, awaiting permission to execute. A martial guard sincerely proclaimed whilst consciously elevating his telecom system. However, due to the electromagnetic pulse currents, his alloy device dubiously malfunctioned. Sir! We have met contact! I repeat, we have met contact! Sir! He neurotically persisted whilst consciously awaiting the appropriate proclamation of his peculiar superiors, perhaps. As I immensely attempted to sustain my fractional silence, my rather provoking mind gradually perplexed the phenomenon of passive behavior. The time has come. Fools! Exuberantly bewildered, the martial adversaries, with my immense mannerisms. What have you done to my associates? Where are they? I once more sincerely proclaimed, whilst consciously revealing my alloyed hilt across my antramentous robes. They are safe in our hands, the martial guard utterly iterated, as he immensely leaped his onyx armament onwards my mere whereabouts. Poor girl. She told us everything. She is a silent one truly, but we tore it out of her. She twitched like an animal. The final fragments of my compulsory heart ultimately shattered into multiple interstices. Without utterly revealing any peculiar fragments of utter hesitation, I tremendously grappled the vigilant individual with my mere grasp. And the force itself. His physical body exuberantly levitated across the alloyed balcony, his exposed neck immensely meeting my erecting phalanges. This sight was truly an ambiguous one his rigorous armor gradually combusting into multiple fragments. The situational tensions merely fluctuated, as this rather innocent sight met with my amber pupils, and abandoning silence indubitably embarked upon our perplexing minds. Accompanied by the mystical force, I consciously exerted him toward my facial structures. His vigilant associates exuberantly elevated their metallurgic blasters in great fear. Where is she? I sincerely muttered into his erecting ear, as my unconditional factor of sheer intimidation potentially silenced the hostile adversary before me. With utmost hesitation he desired not to speak. His exposed throat ultimately tightened based upon my precarious grip, indubitably endorsed by the force itself. You think this is a game? I consciously persisted. The Sith have arrived. You call yourself worthy of a force wielder. Why do you think your communication device has malfunctioned? EMPs, thousands of Jedi will die tonight. And there is nothing you can do to stop us. The girl was merely a necessary sacrifice. You were deceived. I immensely leaped my amber eyes toward the other adversarial troops, 
and a peculiar attempt of utterly forging a plan, perhaps. Then once more I ambiguously gazed upon the conditioned sheep before me. The Emperor sends his regards. I then scrupulously erected my crimson saber before the martial guard. With potential vexing sentiments, he gradually grunted in a sheer attempt of merely escaping my conscious grasp. I thus utterly dismembered his facial structures from his physical limbs. His astral spirit then ultimately vanished across the celestial galaxy, beneath the sheer animosities of the dark side. His peculiar armor immensely trembling onto the allied balcony, seizing its peculiar existence. The vigilant patrol scrupulously besieged as each hostile individual executed multiple plasma lasers onto my whereabouts. However, each metaphysical bolt was indubitably defected by my other sheer grasp, thus meeting their wielder once more. As their alloyed bodies too slithered across the metallurgic surfaces of the vast Colosseum, a monumental silence gradually embarked upon my perplexing mind. Due to the electromagnetic interference of each telecom system, the political audience members were not notified of my sincere act. Neither of those of the other Sith Lords, Senator Eli Norda, arduously continued his depraved speech, and they never should have laid a finger on her, Antonia. However, her mere existence was not merely seized. I could consciously perceive her rather feminine presence nearby. Darth Kematum utterly shared this particular sentiment. It was as if a sensual prowess on my behalf tremendously established a sheer bond with those who adversarially endorsed the strenuous concepts of the Sith themselves. I made my way back to the alloyed gateway and consciously managed to conceal it from its existence with the accompanying mystique of the Force. Within the interior masses of this peculiar structure, a rather unexpected sight immensely stumbled before me. Multiple footsteps gradually echoed amidst the exposing tiles of an altered corridor. Darth! A masculine voice strenuously embarked upon my vigilant perception as a fierce tree leg gradually slithered across an erecting hall. Beside the sheer illuminations of patterned yet discharged spotlights, another figure, enclosed by atramentous robes, slightly accompanied his sheer movements. Tania, I passively muttered, within my befuddling thoughts, as she consciously approached me. However, my rather ominous iterations mangled the sheer ability of leaping across the lady's utter perceptions. Their exposed armors were slightly in rather critical condition as if multiple plasma bolts had sincerely attempted to penetrate their physical bodies. However, their utmost survival was certain. My lord, she passively proclaimed, as she immensely feasted her fulvous eyes upon the constituent audience, which tremendously wielded no appropriate knowledge of my rather insidious intentions. We managed to endure some trouble, however, the Jedi do not know we are here. Mostly mere patrols guard these areas. Yes, Darth Kimatum indubitably exclaimed. However, time is no longer our ally. We have approximately five minutes to execute phase three. The effects of our EMPs will progressively weaken. This will give our enemies the ability to communicate with several military targets and the politicians. They would certainly evacuate. We must act now. The fierce twee leg exuberantly catapulted his tensing grasp onto the innocuous audience. In a rather ambiguous attempt of endorsing his reasoning, he wielded the truth in his solemn words. He was right. As I immensely attempted to utterly comprehend this peculiar situation before me, I consciously shrouded my facial structures, accompanied by my onyx robe. My amber eyes would slightly illumine beneath the depraved shadows of this indistinct cloak. I would consciously sustain my fragmented silence as their mere perceptions immensely met with mine. Within this rather dubious endeavor, particular tension tremendously fluctuated. Well, what is it? What's the plan, Darth? We can't leave without the certainty of Norda's death. I am readier than ever before, the passive lady indubitably proclaimed, as if her essential anticipation obviously penetrated her ambitious focus. You survived. I gradually muttered, as their feasting minds utterly perplexed. Multiple thoughts vividly embarked upon my befuddling vigilance. Indeed, 
I indubitably proclaimed. Nor does death remains to be inevitable at this point. Proceed those corpses out of here. In due time the Jedi will acknowledge our presence. But we already are conscious of this. Surely, that is for certain. Come. We will execute him now. The audience won't expect our existence to be revealed so soon. But that is an unfortunate endeavor we must risk. Murdering him on the stage shall be deemed as the utmost humiliation toward his followers. Killing him here would be a masterpiece. Indeed, Darth Kematum sincerely obliged to my depraved statement, whilst the passive lady merely nodded. Her essential angst would utterly abandon her, as my sheer presence potentially tranquilized her ambitious sentiments. Come, this will be over shortly. I can assure you that. I insidiously exclaimed, consciously slithering across the allied balcony, slightly hinged above the immense audience. Tania, as well as the fierce Twi'lek, arduously summoned their erecting hilts onto their tensing grasps, thus arduously anticipating the inevitable conflict. Within this sensual moment, a rather bewildering silence indubitably stumbled before our excessive ambitions. Our time has come. Please allow me to introduce you to this exquisite, such a marvelous piece of art, isn't it? Now, who in the audience would like to wield such possession in their personal household? A rhetorical question, of course. It's priceless! A rather charismatic chuckle slightly echoed across the great Colosseum of Coruscant, his immense audience gradually obliged to his exuberant mannerisms. Senator Eli Norda consciously elevated a lustrous object from his very grasp. A vivid statue which merely simply symbolizing the sheerly prowess of the Democratic Republic. The remaining politicians inductively feasted their conscious perceptions before him. Yes, it is a precious metal indeed. You know the Founding Fathers of Coruscant once forged this statue as a representation of our politics. It is a symbol of wealth, security, and unity. An immense applause sincerely embarked upon this enclosing proclamation separation and alienated minorities of foreign alliances suffered for this enticement in my utter correction greed lust opulence enough of this i consciously ignited the crimson flames from my alloyed hilt whilst indubitably descending from the erecting balcony an atramentous figure progressively embarked upon norda's dubious speech as I sincerely leaped my physical body onto the metallurgic platform, the obscure audience exuberantly startled within my rather insidious presence. The passive lady as well as the fierce Twi'lek utterly copied my very departure from our immense securities of shrouding Sith. At this rather unstimulating moment, we alas, have revealed ourselves to this rather advancing public. The opulent senator strenuously stumbled across the alloyed stage in a sheer attempt of expressing utmost apprehension, perhaps. Excuse me, but this is a governmental matter. You're not welcome here. You have violated... As the bastard indubitably attempted to finalize his ambiguous statements, I immensely grappled his veridescent tunic beneath his exposing chin and elevated him from the alloyed surfaces of Coruscant. Within this rather depraved gesture, multiple martial troops compulsively embarked upon these areas, parallel from the erecting pillars. Get down! Get down! A vigilant guard proclaimed, after the immense audience utterly attempted to escape this peculiar presentation. Multiple armaments were inductively directed onward my physical body. I consciously feasted my sheer sight upon the hostile adversaries, whom had sincerely attempted to engage my associates. However, their rather drastic attempt had utterly mangled to be successful. Darth Kamatum, as well as Tania herself, indubitably consumed the plasma bullets with their vivid lightsabers, thus potentially finalizing this peculiar attempt of sincere surveillance. Beside the bewildering exclamations of the incompetent crowds, another tensing silence had scrupulously perplexed our arduous minds. The vigilant troops merely ceased their conscious gunfire, 
thus indubitably attempting to sustain utter dominance over this precarious situation. But their hopes abandoned them. Silence! I presumptuously besieged onto the immense public as I consciously concealed the erecting exits of this particular Republican facility. <laughs> Accompanied by the mystical force, the pathway to the exterior realms of Coruscant were sincerely prohibited by my solemn word, each technical door utterly remaining sealed by the force. <laughs> I lusted for utmost power, and here I was, Eli Norda, in my very grasp. Seize your hostilities. It is too late for all of you. Look around. Your corruption will be finalized. The Jedi Temple is under attack as we speak by the Sith. If you pledge your allegiance to your new Emperor, then I may reconsider neglecting your seditious acts against the galaxy. Senator Eli Norda has deceived your Republic for too long. Now, he must face jurisdiction with blood. I consciously feasted my amber eyes upon the adversarial individual within my mere grasp. I hold no fear against you! He passively muttered as a sheer fragment of utter vexation perplexed his congruent mind, scrupulously attempting to sincerely defend his political prowess. I gazed upon him. Then you will die braver than most. I immensely proclaimed, whilst indubitably fluctuating the utter tenacities of my metaphysical grip. Without arduously unleashing any peculiar fragments of sincere hesitation, I consciously leaped my crimson staff onward the alloyed surfaces of the deceitful Colosseum. Farewell, Senator. My wrecking saber conspicuously penetrated the physical constitutions of Eli Norda. His veridescent robe indubitably drowned beside the concerting fragments of the crimson armament. His exposed pulse would progressively deteriorate until no mere grasp of breath was utterly visible. A horizontal strike to his enclosing abdominal regions would indubitably rob the opulent center from his seizing life. Sincere humiliation to a fitting death, appropriate enough for perverting the minorities of the outer rim. The conscious masses exuberantly howled with utmost terror, based on my rather seditious acts. The fierce Twi'lek, the passive lady as well as myself, compulsively elevated our vivid blades in a peculiar attempt of expressing our sincere victory, as well as potentially ridiculing the depraved Republic itself. Senator Eli Norda is dead.